Hello guys. Today's lesson is about neonatal lupus erythematosus. To start from cues, all of the following are potential complications of neonatal lupus except rash, heart block, bleed abnormalities and visual abnormalities. So we will answer the question at the end. Neonatal lupus is an entity distinct from SLE, which is one of a few rheumatic disorders manifesting in the neonate. Neonatal lupus is not an autoimmune disease of the fetus, but instead it results from passively acquired autoimmunity when maternal immunoglobulin G antibodies cross the placenta and enter the fetal circulation. In contrast to SLE, neonatal lupus is not characterized by ongoing immune dysregulation, Although infants with neonatal lupus might be at some increased risk for development of future autoimmune disease. The vast majority of neonatal lupus cases are associated with maternal autoantibodies such as anti-RO, antala, and anti-RNP. Despite the clear association with maternal autoantibodies, their presence alone is not sufficient to cause disease because only 2% of offspring born to mothers with Antiro and Antala antibodies develop neonatal lupus. Siblings of infants with neonatal lupus have 50 to 20 percent chance of developing neonatal lupus. Neonatal lupus seems to be independent of maternal health. Since many mothers are asymptomatic and only identified to have Antiro or Antala antibodies subsequent to the diagnosis of neonatal lupus, so most of the mothers are asymptomatic when they give a birth to a newborn having neonatal lupus. Half of infants with neonatal lupus are born to mothers with a defined rheumatic disease such as Sjogren's syndrome or SLE. When we see clinical manifestation of neonatal lupus, clinical manifestation of neonatal lupus include a characteristic annular or macular rash typically affecting the face, especially the periorbital area, trunk and the scalp. The rash can be present at birth but more often appears within the first six to eight weeks of life after exposure to ultraviolet light and typically it lasts three to four months. Infants may have cytopenia and hepatitis, each occurring in approximately 25% of cases. But the most feared complication is congenital heart block. So they can have cytopenia, rash, hepatitis, and heart block. Conduction system abnormalities which range from prolongation of PR interval to complete heart block with development of progressive cardiomyopathy in the most severe cases. The non-cardiac manifestation of neonatal lupus are usually reversible, where a third degree congenital heart block is permanent. Conduction system abnormalities can be detected in utero by fetal echocardiogram beginning at 60 weeks gestational age. Neonatal lupus cardiac disease has a mortality rate of approximately 20%. Cardiac neonatal lupus can manifest as heart block, cardiomyopathy, valvular dysfunction, and endocardial fibrolastosis. So, neonatal lupus causes or affects, it can cause rash, and it affects the three H, heart, hepatic, and hematology. Fetal bradycardia from heart block can lead to hydrops fetalis. Regarding prevention, fluorinated corticosteroids such as dexamethasone or betamethasone, IV immunoglobulin, and plasma pharesis, and also hydroxychloroquine, and terbutaline combined with steroids have been used in pregnant women with anti or anti antibodies to prevent occurrence or progression of fetal cardiac abnormalities. Regarding treatment, non cardiac manifestations are typically transient and they are conservatively managed, often with supportive care alone. Topical corticosteroid can be used to treat moderate to severe neonatal lupus rash. And cytopenia may improve over time, but severe cases occasionally require IVIG. Supportive care is usually appropriate for hepatic and neurologic manifestations. And as the neonate clears maternal autoantibodies over the first six months of life, this inflammatory manifestation gradually resolves. When we see screening, because maternal autoantibodies gain access to the fetus through the placenta at about 12 weeks of gestation, all pregnant women with circulating antiro or 
anti antibodies or those with history of offspring with neonatal lupus or congenital heart block are monitored by a pediatric cardiologist with screening fetal echocardiography performed weekly from 60 to 26 weeks of gestation and then bi-weekly through set four weeks. The period of greatest vulnerability is usually at 80 to 24 weeks. And if a fetal bradycardia is found during screening in utero monitoring by echocardiography, and if fetal echocardiography confirms a conduction defect, screening for maternal antiro and anti antibodies is warranted. So to answer our question, the question says all of the following are potential complications of neonatal lupus except rash, heart block, blade abnormalities, visual abnormalities. So we have said neonatal lupus affects the skin, which it causes rash plus 3H, heart, hematology, and hepatic. And the answer is D. Visual abnormalities not the characteristics of neonatal lupus. Infants born to women with lupus are at risk for a rare condition referred to as neonatal lupus, which is not a true form of lupus. It occurs when an infant passively acquires autoantibodies from a mother with SLE. And approximately 2-3% to of infants born to women with lupus will have this temporary condition. Women with diagnosed lupus should be screened for neonatal lupus during pregnancy by having a maternal blood test between 80 to 24 weeks of gestation. Infants with neonatal lupus may experience a rash, blood abnormalities, liver problems, and the most resolve by six months of age, and some infants develop potentially serious complete heart block, and the heart block is treated with a pacemaker insertion. In addition, approximately 25% of these infants are born premature. So this is a short summary of neonatal lupus. Thank you for watching.